Dishers. We are. I was supposed to say that and I already messed the whole thing up. That's okay. Yep. We're, we're all good here. Nobody's perfect. It's okay. I'm Wendy. I'm Stephanie. Yes. Um, we're coming to you again. This is floss tube number two for us. And yay! We have a title page and music to go with it. I'm so excited. It's very exciting. So excited. We're like so um, professional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And a huge thank you to my daughter because she came over the other day and spent like two hours messing around finding um, the, the, the green background and then making sure it could work and be loaded and spliced into our video as well as finding the music that we wanted. Um, listen to many, many different <laughs> the music selections to find something that we thought would look or sound nice. Um, so huge thank you. She's also going to come out here when we finish up this. We're going to obviously upload it, but then she's going to take a bus. She doesn't live anywhere near here. So she's going to actually take two buses, probably about an hour and a half trip wow. to get here to help us finish putting it all together and teaching me how to do this so that she won't have to keep coming out here and hopefully I'll be able to do this on my own. Nice. So a huge thank you to her and um, all that she's awesome. done for us. Thanks. And also, yes. <laughs> we have a huge thank you as well. Yeah, we wanted to thank Audrey so much, Stitchy Witch 42. Thanks for the huge shout out on your video. We appreciated that so much. And we also had a shout out to Michelle Bendy and Linda Joe at Pretty Southern. They did just a little Instagram story picture uh, and shouted out our Floss 2 page. So we appreciate that so much, you yeah. guys. Thank yeah. you so much. That has went a long ways to um, upping our subscribers. Yeah. Um, our views. Yes. Huge, yeah. huge thank you for everybody. Yes. Big thank you so kisses. much. Mm. Yes. Thank you, everyone, you. for watching. Yes. We appreciate it so mm. much. We hope you keep on coming yeah. back. And if this is your first time watching, thank you so much. Yeah. And we hope you like us and want to keep on watching. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we're going to get better at this each yes. time. And it will be more entertaining or more fun <laughs> or whatever you want to think about it. Um, so, getting into things that have been going on in our lives, as well as maybe uh, learning a little bit more about us. We're going to go ahead and start with that. Um, things that have been happening in my life. It's been quite the week or the last two weeks um, for us. Probably the most recent was yesterday I had a dentist appointment. So did my son. I like to mention that the whole saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. If you've been around animals, especially the big animals, they are strong. Pardon me, i got to get my cat. They are very strong, and like I said, they'll, you can lead them places, and they'll follow you because that's part of their you know, learning and their teaching stuff. Um, but if they don't want to drink, you cannot pull their neck down for one thing. And even if you did, if they obeyed and got their neck down, they're not necessarily going to drink. Even if you think they need to drink and they're dehydrated and whatever, they are not going to do it. So that kind of goes along with children as well. <laughs> You can't always just make them do things. I mean, as they're younger, sure, they're going to obey you probably. They're going to do, they're little enough that you can make them do things. As they get older, it's a totally different matter. So we've had several issues, my son schooling for one. Um, but as I mentioned, the dentist appointment, he's had issues for years. He doesn't like to brush his teeth. Um, I keep reminding him to brush his teeth. We go to the dentist and they give him the drill and they give him the little talk about if you don't take care of your teeth, you're going to have problems down the road. And he's good for about two or three days. And that seems to happen with everything that they get a talking about. They're good for about two or three days. And then they fall back into the same routine. Well, at this dentist appointment, the hygienist, and I'm getting my teeth done at the same time, so she comes over into the little bay I'm in, and she says, we need to talk about this. It's very serious. Your son, has his teeth are getting so bad that I can't even clean all of it. I can't do the whole cleaning because um, it's taking the enamel off. Oy. Yeah. 
So, as much as we've talked to him, as much as they've talked to him, I am a little bit more of the um, lay the hammer down at home <laughs> and my husband, even though he does, he's still more of the pushover, you know, he kids can kind of get away with a little bit more with him. So I have told him in the past, stop buying them soda, stop doing this, uh, all the sweets, whatever, he's not brushing his teeth, we really need to crack down on this, it's not been happening. So. Now that they've said he's in danger of losing his teeth oh, my. because it's so bad, I think my husband's finally taking this as we really need to do something. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's not fun. So we're really having to crack down on the teeth brushing, which means, I mean, we're having to come to the point where if you don't brush your teeth and we don't see you brushing your teeth, you're going to lose your phone. Do you have to watch him brush his oh, teeth? Oh, yeah. We're going to have to watch him brush his teeth. I've set a timer because usually the recommendation is two minutes to brush their teeth at least. Mm. Um, he's got a fluoride, a special fluoride toothpaste from the dentist, so mm -hmm. it's prescription strength. Mm -hmm. But you got to use it. Yeah. So, yeah, we have to watch him. It's ridiculous. He's 18 years old, and I'm still having to watch him like he's five-year-old. Um but it's the only way we can try to get him into a pattern of doing it on his own and mm -hmm. that he will care when he is on his own as an adult. Right. You know, do what we can for now. Uh, <clears throat> some other issues that have been happening is that my mother-in-law has, and she's always kind of generally not had the best of memory. She'll forget things and we'll remind her of stuff, but it has progressed now to the point where at a, den, a doctor's appointment, I don't know how soon uh, recent it was, they, they did say that she's probably in the early onset of dementia. Um, and that she lives alone in an apartment. Um, she does still drive, but she has had three accidents in the last year. Mm. So um, things need to change and we're going to have to move her. Um, it's kind of getting to the point where my husband's going to have power of attorney for her. She needs to go into some other, um, resident where it's probably got also mem memory care and assisted living. I'm of the opinion, even though he's not sure, but even things have just happened in the last few days that she probably needs to be already in an assisted living level. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually it's going to move into memory care. She's got an appointment, but as you all know, when you deal with certain issues, some of those appointments are months out. And so that's kind of the situation with that kind of testing. It's going to be a very in-depth testing when they do this. The, mm -hmm. the onset dementia diagnosis was just something they probably did in the office and kind of realized this was happening. Um, but the other one is several hours long. And so it's it's months down the road. So even though we probably know what the diagnosis is gonna be, we don't have it yet. Um, so it's a little sad that she's kind of gotten to this point. Um, she probably really shouldn't be driving anymore. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard, you know, if you think about it yourself, if you were in the same boat, would you want somebody to take your keys away? Sure, it's hard. You it's really it, hard. Yeah, yeah. That but I think she's slowly realizing some things that are going on, mm. and it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those are a couple issues that we're dealing with um, that aren't the funnest mm. <laughs> things. Um, something that's more on the fun side is in about a week is going to be my anniversary. Nice. So yay! Happy anniversary. Yeah, it'll it'll probably happen before we need to make the next video, so that's why I wanted to mention it. It's going to be twenty nine. Whoop whoop. Twenty nine years. Hey. As most people would say if they've been married that long, it's too late to get a new one and train one. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to, but it's kind of one of those situations where it's just yeah, it's out there, and that's we're just going to stay putting up with each other and working it through. So those are the things that have been happening in my life in the last couple weeks. Nice. 
Yeah. Well, we did together. We had something happen. Last Thursday was yeah. the uh, Pacific Northwest Stitchers meetup. Mm -hmm. The first Thursday meetup at Acorns and Threads. That was so much fun. It was, yeah. it wasn't super packed. Like it, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not as many people. Sometimes it's more. It wasn't super packed, but it was really loud. There was a lot yeah. of conversation going on, but it was really fun. And it was awesome because Janine did just come back from market. Mm -hmm. And even though poor thing was so sick, she was I felt sick, so bad for her. Away. She's trying to um, tell us everything. Yeah. And she's it was great because as we were sitting and stitching and visiting, she was sitting down with us and mm -hmm. just telling us stories about market, which is yeah. so cool. And uh, so that was a really fun time. Got some more stitching mm -hmm. done, enjoyed that. And then um, Friday, the day after, was the first day of market days at Acorns and Thread and at Acorns and Threads. And um, uh, I had decided I wasn't going to go. Wendy, you decided you were going to go. I was because I had several errands. And yeah. so it was just going to be kind of along the route. Yeah. And I had decided I, I'm i part of the, the Acorns Collectors Club. It's a coupon book. And so you kind of get some perks. And the it was going to be open up to us an hour early. And I thought, gosh, I'm not going to make it on time. I don't really want to go unless I can get there right then. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I ended up having a conversation with someone and ended up, they said, come down, come have they lunch with us. You in. They did. I mean, <laughs> let's just say, kind of got to do a little shout out again. Linda Joe, when Linda yes. Joe, pretty Southern says, come have lunch with us. Yeah, yeah I'm going. So I got in my car and I went down. Yeah. Especially and, since she wasn't there on Thursday. Yeah. Cause so. we miss her so much. She hasn't yeah. been at the meetups in such a long time. And uh, I walked into Acorns and Threads, and everybody was already waiting at lunch, so we just did a little bit, and I planned to go back. But, uh, and as you can see, I talk with my hands a lot. And, uh, <laughs> <Don't> we, <laughs> we ended up going o across the parking lot and eating, and also there was Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher, and mm -hmm. uh, Lori McCleary, uh, who's tech stylist. And the four of us had lunch. It's so much fun. I got to see their haul and just chit-chat with them. They're such wonderful ladies, mm -hmm. and I am so blessed to know them and be a part of their stitchy world. And then I went after lunch and went back and did some more shopping and I had already got my stuff the day before because if we had pre-ordered stuff for market, uh, Janine had already given it to us. But went back, yeah, saw a few more things. Yeah, I had to get always. a few more, always. And then there were some things that I ended up seeing that I didn't know about, and they were already gone. But I signed up on the list because they were so stinking mm -hmm. cute, and I'm like, gotta have it, yeah. gotta have it. Yeah, I'm much more of a, I don't usually pre-order mm -hmm. because I like to see it. Yeah. Um, instead mm -hmm. of looking at it on the phone or mm -hmm. computer or whatever, mm -hmm. um, even if it's just a pattern, I still prefer to be there and actually yeah, I'm look tangible. at it. I'm mm tangible. -hmm. I I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I usually just wait until the market shows up. Sure. <laughs> Do yep. it that way. Yeah. I get so, it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exciting so, stuff going yeah. on. Lots of issues. I'm sure that I will have updates, especially with my mother-in-law. I hope my son will be taking care of his teeth, so we'll yeah. get through that. Uh, I was just going to, I was going to say a few more things. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to, last week when I was introducing myself, I kind of had like a brain fart. And <laughs> couldn't, I just, I was like, I don't know, who am I? And when Wendy was talking about camping, I'm like, I like camping, yes. but I, and I do, but I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't actually say anything about myself, really, right. but just quick couple things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually from Eugene. I was born and raised there. I currently live in Vancouver, Washington now. Mm -hmm. I'm married. Um, but Eugene will always be my home. Yeah. It has my heart. And my parents are there. I love to go down as often as I can. And uh, and I'm a duck. I'm, you live in Eugene. You're born yeah. and raised in Eugene. I was born a duck, raised a duck. I will always be a duck. And mm -hmm. I, I am actually a huge sports fan. I don't play sports. <laughs> but I love sports. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those weird girls that is, I love action movies. Mm -hmm. I love like a guy stuff and I love sports. I love baseball and I love football. I love football uh, and baseball a lot. And just, I love to watch sports. Um, but then I'm super girly and I love cross stitch and I love all things sparkly and cute and pretty and I love, I'm an Anglophile. I love all things English. I'm mm -hmm. huge into English TV and English movies. Yes. They have my, I love that. I love period pieces. I just, yeah. So I am super eclectic in everything mm -hmm. that I have in my life. Um, but so yeah, so sports yes. are a huge part of my life. Love them. Love the ducks. Mm -hmm. Huge college fan, uh, more so than professional. Um, but I kind of, I'm that yeah. girl that can Kind of switch back and forth. Yep. Go yep. in every direction. Yep. It's kind of fun. Yeah. 
Makes life Excellent. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Let's show you what we got. Hot, Hot markets. From markets. Yes. Um, I did not get as much. I try not to spend a ton of money because it's kind of like, okay, that's more patterns to add to my stash. I want to get these patterns knowing that I'm actually going to stitch them or mm -hmm. hopefully going to stitch them. So I don't necessarily want hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> so I did not get as many as I know a lot of people do. So the ones I got were the flamingos. Cute. Of course. Super cute. Yes. I love the flamingos. Um, oh my gosh, when I saw this, I was just <gasps> dying and laughing. Mr. Delicious and Mrs. Delicious. I love that. I got that too. <laughs> Anytime they do a play on Thanksgiving turkeys, whether it's the turkey with the sign saying help or don't eat me <laughs> or the Mr. and Mrs. Delicious, it cracks me up. Well, Bendy had that and she had stitched them a little while ago and I was like, oh my gosh, I love them. Oh yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. So it's great. Oh, um, so yes, I'm trying to find oh, the correct I page. It. I don't want to because I got the material. That one? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure oh, out. No, one. it's this one. So, so I got this. This is very pretty. Print it's got printed. several patterns in it. Yeah, it's a nice so little booklet. The one that I have, I'm going to do is the spring one because I got the fabric that goes with so it. So pretty. So it is, um, it's already got a print on it. Mm -hmm. It's got roses and kind of faded words in the background. And you actually stitch that picture onto it. Yeah, that was all gone by the time I got there. Yes, so I noticed pretty. that it was pretty, pretty It'll come low. Back. Yeah. And then the only other thing that I got was this. Yeah. Uh, this was written on the whiteboard in, for the bathroom at Airbnb. Oh. <laughs> Crints and threads. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the pattern, I'm like, oh. I have to have this. Oh, I don't self-medicate with cross stitch. I have a prescription. This old girl called it a receipt. I love Whatever. It. I love it. I'm probably going to change a little bit. I'm not really. I mean, I like the flowers and the colors of that, but the houses are not um, really Style. speaking to me. Yeah. So, like with the this one, I'll probably change it to more like log cabin colors, mm -hmm. make yeah. it look like that. Sure. And maybe this little whimsical one, I don't know if I'll keep the colors, but maybe even put like a crooked little stovepipe coming oh, out. Oh, that'd be cute. Mm -hmm. That would be really fun. Yeah. So I'm going to change it a little bit on mm -hmm. this, but nice. um, otherwise it just, yeah, it cracks me up. And <laughs> I'll go in like a stitching room, sewing room or something so I can justify everything I'm buying. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I got for haul. <laughs> okay. I got haul. Yeah. But see, here's the thing. I do, I have a problem. I am thoroughly and completely addicted to buying cross stitch, even yes. more so. We already talked about this. My main hobby is collecting cross stitch stuff. Yeah. I am going to have to de stash at some point. Of course. Only, and that's partly because when I started really getting just, again, I'm not going to say the, the, the three letter word, Audrey, K I T. <laughs> but just, I said it a lot last week. I'm sorry, everyone. Anyway, when you come from that background, mm -hmm. you don't realize what's out there. And then before I really knew my aesthetic, I was just buying like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't really like that. I'll never yeah. do that. Yeah, so, and that's exactly. okay because then I can de stash it, mm -hmm. get a little money back, and then buy the stuff I really want. Yeah. So, anyway, first, I'm going to start with this just because it's so cute. So, Diddly Daddle Designs, I bought this bag because I had seen it on, again, mm -hmm. Michelle Bendy. You got to do shout out to her. She, she is such an enabler. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I blame you. Yes, and then this right. is the back. But I saw this and I'm like, oh, I have to have this. I yeah. thought it was so cute. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay, so here's my, I apologize because it's a little obscene. <laughs> uh, and I do have a problem with, um, we already discussed Plum Street and um, Brenda Gervais with I Needle and Thread. I, I have a sick addiction. So I got Spring Fling. Mm -hmm. Not sure which way to. Very cute. Um, I love this one, Where Liberty Dwells. I just mm -hmm. think, and I love that it's two patterns. Yeah. It is so stinking cute. I love it. Mm -hmm. And my husband always loves those because he's super into the patriotic stuff. Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh, by the way, shout out to my husband, Andy. Mm -hmm. He wants to try cross stitching. So I'm trying to teach him and he wants to do it on linen because he said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it the hard way. He got four whole stitches in <laughs> on 32 count linen. And he's like, you tell your friends, these are perfect stitches. And I'm like, well, they're okay. <laughs> 
anyway, when flowers blossom, love it. Yes. Love it so hard. So, so hard. Love this so hard. And then I love this, the uh, Prairie House Sampler, that log cabin mm -hmm. and the blues. It's just everything. Yeah. It's so stunning. Love it. And then this one, I don't even know why. I, Holiday Hoopla Easter. I mean, it's super cute. It's just little, but I just had to have it. Yeah. Everybody seems to be talking about bunnies right now, so. I know. Okay. That, that must have been it. This one. There was one other that I saw before this. I'll, I'll show it later. But this one, the Woolen Flax Co. by Plum Street Samplers. Um, it might be one of my favorite patterns of all time. It is the barn, the sheep, the girl. I mean, it's, it's. It's everything. It's just everything. Mm -hmm. Plum Street Samplers, A Gentleman's Daughter. I love this. And I love the, uh, is it Union Jack? Is that what it's called? Yes. I love that. Because again, I'm an Anglophile. <laughs> Not things, yes. all things English, so. <laughs> Woohoo! There you go. Fox View, because I have to have all the stacks. Oh, yes. I have every single one. Yes. Have I stitched any? Nope, not a single one. Not yet. But I love them. Uh, spring Salt Boxes, the Salt Shakers. Oh, I love mm -hmm. this. And the colors, this one. Oh, it's so dreamy. Mm -hmm. I want to live in those colors. Oh, I love it. And then, of course, my addiction to the blue flower. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll go in order. Okay, so sp a winter squirrel. Love. Mm -hmm. So cute. Spring squirrel. Oh, he's so cute. And then the quilting bee. Yes. So pretty. Okay. And then this one. And I actually have a shout out for this one too. It's pretty cool. Scarlet House, A Perfect World. I love this so much. The colors are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it says, if you don't know, in a perfect world, you would find me here with the birds and the flowers and the dogs and the deer. Well, I had this idea. I am a cat person. I love dogs, love dogs, but I don't have dogs and I'm a cat person. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'm going to change this and change the word dogs to cats. And I'm going to try and make those little doggies look like kitties. As we talked about before, yeah. probably just add a tail and it'll be okay. Yeah. But... Um, so, okay, I, I'm sorry that I don't know how, I have heard it Tanya, I've heard it Tanya, so oh, is it Tanya or I'm Tanya Brockmeyer? Sure. I apologize if I'm butchering I your would name. I say Tanya. See, okay, so Tanya at the Scarlet House. I, mm -hmm. she, on Facebook, had posted something about uh, Zappy Dots or whatever, and mm -hmm. I said, um, they're the little needle binders. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, now I need those. I don't have any, but I need them with the things. Mm -hmm. And I just wrote on there. I'm going to do this, hope it's not offensive. And she actually wrote me back personally and said, not offensive at all. You make, you, you add your cats yeah. and make it your perfect world. Yeah. So I am going to make this say cats and I have the designer's blessing. Yeah. So thank you so much. Hey, then this one, I have another one. Uh, we already show uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Delicious. So oh, yes. show that one again. Um, and I ended up picking this one up. It's a shepherd's bush kit called tis a gift. I love the Shepherd's Bush kits because they have everything, but this was a market one, and it really is quite sweet. And I actually am not sure if those are, I think those are cows. So they're sheep, and I think those might be little cows. Wow, they're and really hard to see. It is, but I don't think in. that they're sheep because they're a little, anyway, I honestly yeah, think yeah. that they're cows. I know it's really hard to see. They're if you guys can tell brown, kind of shape, two shades of brown, yeah. you guys tell me what you think. But love. So, yes. oh, and, and then, sorry, I forgot that. Um, and yeah. Teresa Kogut. I actually had ordered three Teresa Kogut's. See, I know. Excessive. I'm sorry. I've seen. I had ordered three. <laughs> Two of them were just all out. She's just, her stuff was out. Oh, so popular. But, uh, Witchy Poo came in. So I did get Witchy Poo. Mm -hmm. And then I ordered, um, Happy Scarecrow and oh. Flying Lessons. That Flying Lessons okay. is so cute where the Santa's yeah. leading the sheep. Love it. Nice. Yep. Okay. So that's my home market haul. I saved my birthday money. Okay, people? Yeah. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> It's justifiable. It's justifiable. Yes. Thank you. So we are going to move on to our whips now and other finishes and things like that. that yep. We've got. Um, on the last video, I showed the whips that I have currently got that I remember. Um, <laughs> three of them, Esther's Wave that I changed the colors onto mm -hmm. the blues and greens, mm -hmm. the Flamingo that was from a cross stitch mag magazine, mm -hmm. and my Hade, which is that treasure hunt bookshelf. I got nothing done on those. <laughs> because I was kind of, as I mentioned, I was very obsessed in another whip. Plus, I had something that I had showed that I had wanted to start by this next video, which that also sucks me in. 
completely. And as well as my other finish, um, I wanted to get that done. So all of those things together kind of really kept me from getting my hands on the other things. Hopefully in the next few weeks I'll work on those other things as well. Um, so the one that I am working on and getting so much closer by the day to finishing is that Birds of Paradise one. So pretty. It's the Russian one, so I'll zoom in so you can see some of those birds and everything. So I actually did quite a bit, but because there's so much to do, it just took a while. So I think probably from about here up is what I did. So I've done a lot. Nice. All of this, you know, there's quite a bit there. Um, so got a lot done, and I don't, as you can see, I'm almost to the top, so I think it only goes up a little bit farther. So I should easily have the main stitching part done by next time. It did come with some ribbon to do French knots with. I have not done French knots with ribbon yeah. before. So I'm gonna practice on something else. Yeah. And yeah, if yeah. it goes well, then I would do it. If it doesn't go well, it's not going to really hurt the piece if I don't have it. Mm. Or maybe I need to try and get something that's not, the width isn't terrible. Um, it's probably a quarter inch, but it still seems thick. It still seems wide to me. Mm -hmm. So maybe getting an eighth inch ribbon and trying that too. Um, it'll just have to kind of see as I go and what I decide. Yeah. But yes, it's getting very close to being done. So that's really my only whip that I have to show. What whips do, do you, you have? Do you want to do whips? Yeah. Or do you want to just do... Oh, I can do them all. That's fine. It's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a finish that I did, and this is the one that I wanted to do, um, a start, which is under the stars. Because she's a lover of camping. Yes. So I wanted to have this ready for, um, camping time, the summertime. So I'd have it. Well, once I got started on it, it was going pretty fast. I mean, yeah. I finished this thing in two days. Yeah, you cruise through that. Yeah, it, it's not terribly big, so that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, once I finished it, it was getting close to when we were going to do the video, and I'm like, I'm going to FFO this thing if it kills me, because I want to show it. I so, want it in that yeah. video. So if you can see, they added a stick at the top and some pine cones at the bottom. That's not good enough. I'm an overachiever, of course. So I added a little bit more than that. So on the same similar type of backing, but, and the great thing about owning your own home is you can go out in your yard and see what you can find. So I actually found this stick lying in the dirt. Um, and then my little sticks over here, I just took my saw out there and cut a branch off of a tree and cut up some sticks to put in there. Um, the rest of it I bought. Um, the pussy willers are not real and they will last forever. So most everything except for the butterfly is weather resistant and it is going to be just fine out nice. there in the weather. Um, some little, I don't know if it's not really Spanish moss cause it's brown, but that, that, unfortunately I don't have pine trees. So I had to buy the pine cones. Um, and this frog, which just cracks me up is actually one that you would, it's like ceramic. You, you would put on the edge of a pot. Oh, so his arms, he yeah, up. he just hangs there with his front arms, but I'm like, he's great for outdoors, he's great for camping, he's all that, and I love him, and he's going on my board, cute. so there's all that. Very cute. Lots of stuff going on. The other finish that I did was I had stitched and finished probably a month and a half or maybe two months ago, the Pretty Little Tokyo. I love it. We had been to Tokyo before, so that's why I wanted to do it. So I actually finished a project with it. Aww. I made a bag. Neat. So there's the stitching part. Very cool. And it has these little handles. It's actually wide. It's a neat bag. Um, it's got a nice zipper. I actually lined it with the same stuff. It's actually outdoor fabric, so it's very uh, sturdy. Believe me, it's very sturdy because I was not going off a pattern when I made this, and I've had to FF or frog so much stuff, <laughs> so many different times, um, and it has stood up to that. Nice. So um, this is actually going to be my little travel bag on the airplane. Nice. 
That's why I made it, because the one I normally take, it, it is on wheels, but I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm not taking as much stuff that's as heavy. Um, so I don't need anything that's on wheels. I don't need anything very really big because I want it to fit under the seat mm -hmm. in front of me on the airplane. Mm -hmm. And that bag, bag will fit, but there really isn't a lot of room for my feet once I do that. Yeah. Um, plus the little handle that you pull up gets stuck, so I have to stick my foot on it while I yank the handle <laughs> I'm sure I look just great coming off the airplane every time. Um, I'm sure so, not alone, though. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted something smaller, and of course, it's Tokyo. It's a little travel-wise type of thing, so that's what I did. Do you ever worry? I've never done anything like that before. I've seen people make bags, and I'm, I kind of want to do that now. But mm -hmm. do you ever worry about your actual stitching? No. You don't? The you don't. reason that and I might have been worried about it if I hadn't already done something and it has held up so well. Mm -hmm. So it was a shirt. We went with, my husband and I went with another couple to Disney, <coughs> Disney and we all got red shirts and on the corner here of the shirt, I stitched Mickey, mm -hmm. but all four of us had a different post oh, for Mickey. Okay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't terribly big. It's probably mm -hmm. about that big, about mm -hmm. that wide. It gets washed. Oh. I've had that shirt for 20 years, and oh, it nice. looks as good as when I first stitched it. Nice. So if it can handle that, that, that bag is probably going to be Great. just fine. Terrific. Love Even it. if I have to wash it. Good to know it, for future for me. It's probably going to be just fine. Sweet. Yeah. Um, so yes, what kind of whips and FFOs? Okay. Oh, no FFOs, because that's uh, how I roll. Someday. Although, yes. Instagram people who are following us... I did show one. I did at Christmas. It was yes. for my mom. My husband made the frame, mm -hmm. and it was so sweet of him. He wants to start making frames for me. I love that. I won't say no to that. Um, so really cool. Okay, so I am still working on um, the Blue Flower Spring Magic. Oh, yes. You just had, um, like, some blue flowers last yep. time. I just, I, I did. I only had the little blue flower, so mm -hmm. I've gotten a lot more done. You can actually, yeah, can you see? Oh, yes. It's looking um, good. So before, I just had that done yep. and just the top right here in one pink thing. So I have all the stems, all the pink done. I have this thing and these little, I don't even know what that is, but I've got that done. And I've got these little flowers. And then I have the whole cauldron all filled in. I mean, not filled in, outlined. And I'm working on the flower and the leaves. And then I can fill in the whole thing. So, yeah. And I actually got... Almost all of that part done uh, last Thursday at the meetup. Okay. So that was nice. Yeah. So I was really happy that I've got that. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to start some new projects yes. because I am still trying to do the hashtag Stitch9 challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to add to this. Okay. I love this so much. My husband bought this for me at Christmas. Um, it is Scattered Seed Samplers, Mary Mustard Seed. Mm. And there is something about her that just... I don't know, I love her so much. It says, scattered seed I sow for thee, oh, gather birds and sing for me. And this might sound kind of weird, but one of the reasons why I love her, she makes me think of um, the woman in Mary Poppins at the end who's feeding the birds and yes. singing the tuppence the bag and feed the birds. Feed the birds. Yeah. And for some reason, she makes me think of that. So anyway, I don't have a ton done, but you can actually see I've got the little bird, I've got her hat, part of her face, and part of her dress done. And that... It's actually stitching up pretty darn fast. Mm -hmm. And those are both on 40 count. Uh, I don't remember what I'm doing on them. Uh, and then, I love this one. It's Stacey Nash oh Primitives. Is it so cute? Spotted, yes. spotted Pigs Pinky. Pigs. They crack me I up. love them. And the little babies. So yes. cute. So with this, um, it calls for murky, which yes. everybody was talking about how much they loved it. I pulled it out. I really didn't like it. I mean, I liked it, but not for this. Right. Because this actually had like a blue hue, and I really liked it, and yeah. it didn't. Anyway, I found something blue at home that I thought was really pretty. It was 32 count. I actually hated it. Started stitching it, um, and I was just like, I am not loving this. Yeah. So I took it out, and I started all over again. And I actually, it's 40, this is 40 count um, vintage fawn. And all I have is <laughs> two legs and part of the pig, pig's belly. <laughs> yes. But... You know, it works. Oh, and then my little wave. I say that a lot. Between that and oofta, those yeah. are some of my words. Um, but yeah, and, and I'm actually changing the colors. It only calls for like five colors. Mm. Um, I changed the black. It called for um, car uh, what is it? carriage black, and I changed it to black coffee. Yeah. Um, and it calls for apple cider. 
I just don't like apple cider very mm. much. It depends on what it is, but yeah. um, it looks pretty on here. I'll show you again. I in what person. What is the apple cider part it's, for? It's all of the. Um, is that yeah, it's all the border and the the, the stems mm -hmm. and stuff. And on here it looks okay, but in real life uh, I chose uh, and dive instead, a, mm -hmm. more of a green, a yellowy yeah. green. It just it looks. I, I I like aesthetically how it goes together yeah. better. So, and then I did find something. So I have I found my oldest whip. It's been I I guess I would call it timeout. It's been in timeout for yeah. ten years. That or jail. Uh, yeah, or jail, and because I kind of <laughs> just forgot about it, and I. It was when I was still doing the forbidden word, uh, and it's the dimensions, and it's called Scenic Farm. And actually, I found out this is quite desirable. Mm. It, there are a lot of people who are looking for this, and I love it. I bought it because I wanted to do it for my mom, because um, she, she grew up in Minnesota oh, on a yes. farm, and I thought that that would be so cool. Well, when I started working on it, this call this is eighteen count Ada, and I but I only ever did fourteen count. Oh, and so 10 years ago before my eyesight was getting enough where, but I didn't know that I needed readers uh -huh. for this stuff. And I was like, I, and it's full coverage. I mean, all of this sky, yeah, that's all stitched yeah. and it was the holes and I, it was getting intense. And now how so, many threads were you using? Two. Is it just two? It's okay. two. Some people who go from that, um, lower count don't realize you'd have to start using less threads. Yes. And this one did actually yeah. call for two, mm -hmm. even though it's on 18 because it could do one. But I think that they, anyway, this is how much I got done. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm done. I, yeah. I was like, it. I hate this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't see it. And then I thought, you know what? I am going to, I'm, I'm going to do it on linen. I'm going to yeah. do it, start all Since over. You haven't done that much. Nope. It's not too big of it. And part of me is debating about maybe doing it on a blue flap, blue fabric, not flabric, fabric. So then I don't have to do all the sky, but then that messes up the snow at the bottom. So it's not too so. bad because if you think about it, a lot of times ice and snow has a blue hue to it. Yeah. So if you put the white parts for the snow, you still might have some blue shading, kind of like the clouds in the background. Too. Exactly. You can do the clouds, mm -hmm. but leave the blue fabric as the background right. of the sky. So I'm going to kind of play around with yeah. it. So, um, and then because I am working on the stitch line, so I now have, and I have from last week, Excuse me, I showed Coverlet Christmas, and I had two finishes last week. So now I have three, so I have four whips, uh, including Coverlet Christmas and then the three I just showed. But I'm trying to do that stitch nine. So what I'm doing is, uh, so these are the next ones I'm going to be working on. Annie B's Folk Art Garden Fair. So cute. And I have it all kitted up. So that's ready to go. This one has a funny little story to go along with it. This is A Country Winter by Plum Street Samplers. And I love it so much. This is the one that right before the Wool and Flax Company came out, mm. uh, this was my favorite pattern. Okay. So this one has a little funny story. Uh, it's a kit from Country Samplers. And um, I wasn't part of it, but I found it and they had some left. Well, so Chris, I'm going to shout you out. You know who you are. She and I had decided we were going to do a sal on this because she ended up getting it too. So I've never done a sal. It was going to be my first sal. But she didn't want to do the fabric that it came with. Oh. So she ordered some and said, do you want to buy half? And we'll do it. So she had the half, was sending me the other half. But while we were waiting for it to come, mm -hmm. she got sick and she lives in Redmond and the snow was crazy. Yeah. So she was basically snowed in and stitched. And before I even got my fabric, she had the whole thing done. So my first sal doesn't even exist because she's already done. So now I can just... No stitch along. No stitch going along. Going on. So I can just work on it on my own time. And ironically, I'm actually thinking I might go back and just do it on the original fabric. So who knows? But it was pretty hilarious because yeah. I just... So I had to kind of razz her about that because I'm like, you're all done. She stitched it so fast. Wow. So, and then I love this. Uh, this is uh, Dimensions. Um, wreath of all seasons and you can see it's all four seasons and the words I like that it's not printed they're actually stitched uh it, i love this so much so you have the you know spring summer fall winter all that isn't it so pretty mm -hmm. i love it i love this yeah um but it's on ada and i didn't want to do ada so last week at acorns i found it's called vintage maritime it's got almost like a slightly kind of kind of 
beigeish green. Well, maybe in the shop it looked a little greener. But anyway, yeah. I thought it was really pretty. Just really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought it was nicer than just plain old white or cream Ada. Yeah. So that's what I'm that's I'm gonna work on that as soonish. <laughs> we'll try. I'm gonna We're start. Gonna run out of here I'll make this start, start. <laughs> but I don't know if that one for sure will be a hundred percent part of the stitch nine. But yeah. And then this one, October thirty one by Barbara Anna. And it's so so cute. Yeah. And I have that all kitted up paper. And I dropped everything. Awesome. And I picked all my own colors because this calls for Valdani. And um, I just didn't want to try and search those out. Yeah. So I actually ended up getting mostly thread works that were really heavily variegated mm. that I thought would look really cool because this is this pattern is actually really variegated. Yeah. So I thought it was really cool. Okay. So Excellent. Um, and there's one thing I forgot I was going to do or a little bit earlier in the video and then we just, you know, you move along and you forget. Yep. Um, I had mentioned also, one of the other things I mentioned in the last video, is that with some of the things I had done in the past, especially as I was younger, um, that maybe during each of the videos I would show one or two pieces that I have already done mm -hmm. before. Not necessarily F an FFO, but just something that I've done probably years before. Um, just kind of see some of my work as well as I have quite um, an eclectic taste. I don't necessarily just pick one thing. I like to have a variety of things. Mm -hmm. So, one of them that I did was this one. So, on the off chance that you won't live forever, you might as well be happy now, which is a good thing to think. Yeah. Yes. Um, it is a little bigger size. Um, I actually found the frame at a thrift store. Pretty. And I do, um, if I feel comfortable with it, um, which most of them I would, uh, framed it myself. So it does have a little bit of padding to it. Um, it is a very tight fit, but considering I found the frame at a thrift store very cheaply, I was not going to go out and buy one and spend, you know, $50 or more for a mm -hmm. frame when I could get it for $11 or whatever. Nice. So, there's oh, one of the fun ones. I was wondering if you were going to show this. Yes. Yes, and all my Minnesota stitching buddies um, still talk about this piece. Um, I went out and visited last summer, and they're like, I still remember when you did that and everything. I did not frame this myself. I had um, Deb at Stitchville frame it for me because I did not want to screw it up. It was too nice. Um, it is full coverage. It is Girl with Pearl Erin by Vermeer. Uh, I love Vermeer's work. I don't know why. It just calls to me. Speaks to you. Um, yeah. So it is done on Ada. You can see the border here is actually just the cloth. Um, it just didn't need anything else. It didn't need a mat or anything. A nice frame was good, which we did pick a nice frame. I did have museum glass put in it so that it will not fade yeah. um, and it will keep good. Um, it usually is an indirect sunlight anyway, but just in case, I do not want it to get messed up. Something like that is just, it's worth it. Yeah. There yeah, are just, just some of those pieces. Yeah. Because yeah. it did cost quite a bit to get framed, oh, but bet. that's okay because you have those pieces every once in a while that require that. Yeah. So. That's awesome. So anyway, I think we have kind of covered about everything. Yeah. And uh, we don't want to have our videos last too terribly long, so this is about right. Yep. Sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah. So, so thanks for joining yes, us again. You. I hope you come back next week. And yeah. uh, we just appreciate you guys so yes, much. Yes, thank you. Thank again, you. comments, questions. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.